My name is uh, Roman Hovorka. I work um, on the artificial pancreas and I'm a director of the group who is working in this field. At the Uni University of Cambridge, we started about 11 years from, from, from now, back. And um, we initially work just on the small lab studies, just in um, working how it works when we were in the control conditions. And for the last five, six years, uh, we've been testing it, how it works in, at home uh, in people's normal life. Our main contribution in Cambridge was to do clinical trials, but to do clinical trials with the computer program which we developed. So that's our main contribution to this field. Um, what we realize is that we need to be really adaptive. Everybody is different. Every day is different. Every night is different. And for that we um, tested various um, changes or part of the algorithm. Uh, and then we moved also from testing in just a few days in the hospital to testing in people's homes. When they go on holidays, they have a Christmases, they go skiing, we realize the amount of variability is much wider. So again, it helps us to modify um, the, the algorithm in the way so it can, it's more responsive. Um, so now we tested the algorithm in children as small as 18 months to people all the way to um, day 70s and also in pregnant women with type 1 diabetes as well. Our work takes us across the globe. <laughs> We work in the UK, we work in the, um, what is, what the European Union, in, in Germany, Luxembourg, Austria, but we also done studies in the US. So what we have is a glucose sensor. This is the transmitter. It will be stuck on the arm, on the tummy, and it will be measuring glucose every five minutes. That glucose will then go into a computer program and then computer program could be on a mobile phone and it will take the data and it will calculate based on the information of the sensor how much insulin needs to be delivered every 10 minutes. Then there's an insulin pump which will receive the signal and will give the insulin through insulin cannula which will be coming from here into the tissue. So what we are doing is we are mimicking or we are trying to resemble what the pancreas inside the body does through these functions. The sensor and the, the computer program works together. The sensor is sending data to the computer program and the computer program calculates the right amount of dose which is safe and it will improve glucose control and then the pump will deliver the insulin. So they work together, they, each of the components is essential for the system to work, the artificial pancreas to work. So when we started out, the artificial pancreas didn't look at all what it looks like right now. Um, we actually didn't have any communication. The, the nurse was the communicator who was taking the data from the sensor, putting, typing into uh, a computer and then manually changing the pump. Uh, then we have a various um, temporary solutions. We had a small laptops which people took home and put at bedside table. So we are really grateful. Uh, for all our participants who were willing to test these early prototypes so we can progress to what is now more feasible as a commercial product. I strongly believe that the artificial pancreas it is the future of treatment of type 1 diabetes across the ages from the small children up to adulthood. Um, it will help, it will improve glucose control, it will help people to have um, better nights for both people with type 1 diabetes and their families. Um, and also we have the um, suggestion that people overall with glucose, glucose control in the morning have um, better outcomes during the day, they feel better, um, they can perform better as well. The first commercial artificial pancreas is now available in the US. Uh, it is expected that it will reach the UK maybe 2018, maybe 2019. Um, there are a number of aspects which still needs to be addressed and one of, one of them is um, to make this technology available on the NHS. Uh, and for that we need to do clinical trials showing um, how it works, how it performs um, compared to what is currently available. Um, and also the additional aspect is, I think what is important to realize is that each part of the artificial pancreas can be improved, the sensor can be more accurate, can be smaller, 
uh, could last longer, the pumps can be more accurate, uh, the computer programs could uh, do a little bit more, can be sending data to cloud so people, parents can see the data and the healthcare professionals can see the data and get alarm if something is happening. So the range or, or the possibility for innovation, innovation is great in this space and I think this is what we're going to see is that each of the components will continue to improve. One of the most positive findings from the trials was the feedback we received from, from people who were testing the technology. So despite this technology being relatively bulky and then early prototypes, some of people were not willing to give it up. They wanted to keep it, which itself is a sign how well this technology would be accepted. Again, it is not ready, this type of for commercialization. And I think the other one is, um, what we're seeing is we can actually substantially improve glucose control mainly overnight. It gives people sleep, they can perform better. Uh, and I, uh, So it's just not about the glucose control, it's about how people feel well in the morning, they can perform better. So it is the night which seems to be the main benefits um, for, for people with type 1 diabetes and their families. Please do come and help us with trials. They are important. We are where we are because people before you did clinical trials. This technology can improve and can progress only if people are willing to invest um, their time and then support these trials. Um, there is a suggestion that certain technologies are better so you can get a generally slightly better care because you involve clinical trials. Um, and you will be testing really um, quite often the newest technology which is available. Having said that, you can still be in the control, in the control group. The, the importance of you coming to the clinical trial is you helping uh, yourself, but mainly the whole type 1 diabetes field to progress and improve outcomes and make this technology available for, for your next generation and maybe for yourself as well. So right now we have a number of exciting studies which are ongoing. Uh, one of them is in um, children aged 1 to 7 years old. And we've just about to finish the first study where we are comparing insulin with normal strengths and insulin which, is, um, which has reduced strengths um, to see whether, which of the insulin is better for this population. And people are going straight home with these little children with the artificial pancreas um, in four countries in Europe. So the other study which is also exciting um, is testing the artificial pancreas in people who just um, been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. So within 10 days of diagnosis they are recruited to study and they will be uh, they are using the artificial pancreas for up to two years and then we are looking um, how much the artificial pancreas can improve the functioning, still functioning uh, pancreas. So after diagnosis the pancreas still works um, but it, its function is slow reducing, so we are trying to slow down of the function, or the reduction of the function of the, of the pancreas, which is still producing a bit of insulin. So we are about midway in that study, so it's about 90, 90 to 100 subjects to be recruited, and um, we are grateful to our collaborating um, partners in the UK in, in doing the study, and it's study funded by the uh, National Institute of Health, Health Research. And some, many of these studies have been, um, has received support from a number of charities and funding bodies and I'd like to highlight organizations such as uh, JDRF and Diabetes UK for their support as well uh, of the uh, Biomedical Research um, Centre at, at Cambridge. Mm -hmm.